A couple days ago, a post went up on Reddit called The Ugly Truths About World 330 Hosting, written by a previous well-known host. This post managed to get over 3,000 upvotes in just a couple hours. However, the large majority of people didn't actually read it. In an effort to get more people informed about this really unique side of RuneScape's history, I figured I'd turn the post into a video. Before I get started, I'd like to thank host Okra for writing this whole thing up, otherwise really this video wouldn't even exist. A few days ago, an update went out where next to house portals there's a little notice board. It lists the name of a house host and the features that their house has. Prior to this, it was a mess of people spamming to try and get other people to use their house, and indirectly caused a huge underground mess of rumors, lies, illegal activity, and hacking among the house host community. So, Okra was an extremely active host during most of 2018 and some of 2017, racking up 600 plus hours. Sometimes they would spend 84 hours or more a week doing this. Chances are if you used 330 frequently in 2018, you used Okra's house at least once. Something interesting that he points out is that thousands of people use house host every day, and none of them have any clue about any of the things happening in the background. That there are tons of toxic hosts in plain sight using shady tactics to get ahead. Keep in mind this guy put in 600 or more hours into hosting and says, and I quote, the only reason I'm telling you this is because I know I'm not going to host again and I'd love to see the old world 330 die a painful death. So as you guess, things are about to get a little crazy. Let's dive into it. Simply put, yes, they do make money and they can make quite a lot of it. Okra says that the big name hosts plan out a day of hosting far in advance. They'll pre-prep food the day before, learn their rival's sleep schedules to know when to start hosting, and can't really do anything else as they need to relight their altar burners every two minutes. Okra goes on to say, you might think the amount of money a host makes is 100% unpredictable, but when you run the data and numbers, it's actually a lot less random than you might expect. The average host typically makes between 1 mil an hour to 2 or 2.5 mil an hour, just AFK. If you host for over 10 hours, especially two days in a row, you'll almost always see profits in this range. This is just for normal hosting. Those of you who spend a lot of time on 330 might always go to the same house or always see the same person hosting. These people are known as brand name hosts. They make anywhere from 3 to 7 mil an hour if they host for a week without too much competition. Let's say they're hosting on an alt while playing on their main. In theory, the host could make 7 mil or more an hour, which adds up to 85 mil a day, totaling 600 mil a week. Okra also points out that cheerful hosts, hosts that make jokes, and female hosts make more money. So for those of you looking to host, maybe a trip to the makeover mage will help your profits out a bit. When people have 2 to 7 mil an hour profit income AFK, with the added bonus of becoming super recognizable to most of the players in the game using a method that almost nobody really knows about, they get greedy. Really greedy. So when guests enter a home and ask how much the hosts make, they don't give a definitive answer. Every host knows not to say, as if everyone knew how much they made, it would become a gold rush of people trying to get in on it. So despite all the hosts knowing each other and keeping the secret, they're not exactly friends, they're more like enemies. It makes sense because they all have the same goal, to make money. The goal is to keep the secret as small as possible because the more hosts there are, the less money you make. Here is what they would do to keep new people away. New hosts are a threat because if they discover the secret, they'll become a frequent competitor. Now because they're a new host, very few people will join, meaning they'll make very little money at first. Veteran hosts will reinforce this belief that hosting makes no money by saying things like, I only made 250k an hour for the first month or so. So you know the people outside that spam to advertise a house, right? Experienced hosts will lie and say that these accounts are people they actually pay 500k an hour to advertise for them, when in reality they're probably just the host's alt. Then in their house, they'll tell things to their guests like, this new host has a lot of people leaving and coming here because they keep letting the burners go out and making people lose XP. Sorry about that guys. Once the host becomes recognized in the community, if they log in and begin hosting, people will leave whatever other house they're in to go to the more recognized host. This loyalty wins them quite a bit of money. 
Number three, hosts will recognize rich players who donate a lot of money and attempt to befriend them to keep the big donations coming in. This doesn't always work because a lot of the rich guests are pretty secretive about it, so some hosts will more or less try to befriend people wearing what Okra describes as wealthy fashionscape. Lastly, drunk players are also a target because they'll donate maybe more than they should and they might not even remember it in the morning. Okra explains that when you become a big host, you will get recognized literally everywhere. You more or less get the YouTuber or PMOD treatment where people will stop what they're doing to talk to you, give you things, follow you around, let you go if you see them in the wilderness, all because of a little symbol or username. According to Okra, this unfortunately goes to their head. They become annoyed by these people and think of themselves like a god. Some actual quotes Okra collected are, You're lucky I even let you host in my world. I'm the king of world 330. I could get you banned or muted anytime I want because of the PMods that use my house. That last quote right there is why I think the PMod rank needs a major rework, but that's the topic for another time if that's something you guys would be interested in me covering. But yeah, this power really goes to the host's head. The game is donations. That's what it's all about. Donations and recognition. Your name is your brand. Number one, all conversation will loop back to donations. If people don't think about donations or don't know they can donate, they simply don't donate. Number two, calling out fake donations from usernames that don't exist or people that just left the house to go restock on supplies. This once again is a tactic to get people thinking about donations. Number three, when they realize a guest won't donate, the niceness gets redirected to someone else or they pretend to go AFK. Number four, this one surprised me the most. They'll have fake conversations with alts or their friends. Like instead of the host saying, I'm not getting many donations, they'll have their alt ask how much they're making. The host will say something like, I haven't gotten any donations in the last three hours. People will feel bad for the host and they will suddenly get a flood of money. This is the section where it gets real. Like most of this is just downright illegal. So first of all, hosts spy on each other using alts. This is common practice. Some people take it too far. They'll use bots or dozens of alts to run into the host house and spam rumors to try and get people to leave. They'll sometimes spam URLs of Photoshop pictures of the host doing or saying something. They'll scan the IPs that clicked it and through a process of elimination, try to get the host's IP. Sometimes they'll advertise a rival host's house in someone else's house to make it look like the rival is doing it to start a drama war. Now, you might think that the host could just kick the spammers. That's actually wrong. If they stand under the altar, there's too many people standing in a square to be able to right click and kick them. All of these tactics tend to happen when the world gets packed with hosts. Sometimes, however, people will do it on days where they weren't even hosting to make it look like they weren't there so they couldn't be accused. Some hosts will use alts or stolen accounts to try and befriend other hosts to once again try and get their IP or account. If they get either of those, it's game over. They'll delete your entire house and take your items or boot you offline every time you try to host. Going back to rumors hosts would spread about each other, they'd try to turn hosts against each other, make up lies, and if they knew something like your Facebook profile, they'd actually try to catfish you. That is how deep this gets. That in a medieval cookie clicker, there are people who would devote hours to catfishing you just so they can make some extra virtual currency. Corrupt player mods also exist. In fact, they're a huge reason that these underground house hosting tactics survive and work. They'd get people on their team to mute their competitors' advertisers and would get their clan chat to mass report them as well. If you got your rival's bots muted, that's an hour of competition-free hosting, or even more if the advertiser didn't realize they were muted. Or if the mod mutes the host, they really have no way of talking to their players or making sure that they can reel in a couple donations. Speaking of advertisers, the more you had, the better. The goal was to take up as much of your possible guest screen as you could with your name, because they're most likely to pick the name they see the most or is easiest to type. More spam equals more guests equals more money. Now, eventually a host does have to log out, as, you know, six hour logs exist. For those of you who don't know, you can only play RuneScape for six hours straight before the game forces you to log out no matter what you're doing. When this happens, every guest is ejected from your house. A lot of hosts will have alt sit in competitors' homes to know exactly when this happens. 
The second that host disconnects, the rival spam bots start up. Sometimes even saying that the other host won't be back and they should just use their house instead. So despite what some house hosts may say, this update is a really good thing. Everyone finally has a fair playing field when it comes to hosting. It's not about outplaying people anymore. Rumors about hosts and DDoSing could still happen, but now there's a lot less incentive to. Some hosts will still try to deceive guests to get donations, but now you know what to look for. Before I close out this video, I want to say not every host is like this. There are plenty of hosts out there who are reasonable, normal people who won't try and talk you into donating to them. So if you are a house host that doesn't do any of this, I hope you didn't take this video the wrong way. Anyway, let me know if you enjoyed this video, maybe give me some suggestions for another one, but regardless of what you do, I will see you in the next one.